Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. It's another Wednesday night, but tonight was the beginning of our Good News Club, which we're going to run for the next five weeks. We already started with more children than we had in the fall, and we look forward to continued growth. Uh, we had a number of children that called us from the uh, local um, after-school clubs saying, I heard you're having one at your church. We would like to come. So it's just exciting to see those things happen. But it's also exciting after we saw the kids get started around 6.30, we uh, went in and had, again, a number of people, only two of us here at church, but a number of people online uh, joining us in Zoom and, and just the power of, of praying uh, for our, ourselves, praying for our families, praying for our country, praying for the world, praying for ourselves that we could be lights in this dark world. And that was the first thing that I asked, what are the main things you're praying about recently? And those were some of the answers that we received. And, and I, I was just focusing on the power of prayer as we watch what happens around the world. And particularly uh, someone said, I pray for President Putin. I pray for President Biden. Uh, Anyone who acts in pride is acting against God's plan and pray that they would find humility and, and, and realize that there's a God that they're going to answer to. And, and so we, I, I like to say that by, uh, uh, Putin is not the enemy. He's deceived by the enemy. And to pray that, that he would see truth and know that what he's doing to Ukraine is just wrong in so many ways. So how do we, uh, how do we find hope? When we see all this stuff going on, well, one is way is through prayer. But I want to share some verses tonight that, that led me to a, a place of greater hope and a greater focus on uh, the, the opportunities I have as a believer to seek the Lord. So let me open in a word of prayer, and then we'll, we'll talk about these verses. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you really do have a plan for this world. Uh, someone shared in prayer meeting tonight that uh, verse Isaiah 40, 15, I believe, talks about the nations are but a speck of sand in your hand. And even if America, if we think of ourselves as a, a mighty superpower, still just a speck in your hand. So give us humility as a country of what we can and cannot do. Help us to realize that the best thing we can do is not help conquer, but help uh, share the good news that has help build our nation. And Lord, more and more, our country is turning from the good news, turning from you. Help us to find our way back to realize that you're the God who has made any country great. You are the God who does that. I pray that you'll bless us as we look into your word tonight, and I ask that you would encourage us as well. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I've been studying a number of verses uh, in the past week or so in my devotions, and I just was reading over them over and over them, and I said, what do I want to say tonight? I'm calling this an undivided heart seeking one Lord. There's a lot of unity thought talk in this, this, these verses. Zechariah 14 is a great chapter that talks about what's going to happen in the day of the Lord when the Lord returns. There's going to be a day of the Lord portion of the day of the Lord that is the, the great wrath, of pouring out God's wrath in the tribulation time. But then there's also the great day of the Lord when Jesus will reign on this earth for a thousand years. And all the things that happen, you can read some of the things that happen in Zechariah 14. But I love this verse. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day, there will be one Lord and his name, the only name. As we see Putin fighting for Ukraine and Zelensky fighting to keep it, um, I don't know how that's gonna work out. I don't know if it's gonna be another uh, Korea, where it's going to be divided, or after the, after the World War II, Germany being divided. I don't know how this is going to work out. But I know at the end, what I really hope for is there will be one king over the whole earth. And it's a prince of peace, a godly king, a, a, a holy king, a loving king. I, that, that's what we long for, isn't it? That, that peace would finally come. On that day, there will be one Lord. See, to have a king isn't just to have a political figure that'll give us what we want, and that's the way we think of politics sometimes, but we're talking about a Lord that we submit to, and we want to serve him because he is the one Lord worthy of our service and our submission. Let, let God's name, Jesus' name, be the only name that would 
to be thought of as we think about the King of King and the Prince of Peace. So how do we get there? Well, we wait for the Lord because only he can bring us that kingdom. But there are also some truths that it may not be happening in the world, but it can happen in our hearts. In, in Psalm 86, the psalmist says, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. I think about the times that I want to see things go better in this world. And I think about who do I rely on to do that? If not politicians, it's not my own wisdom, it's, it's God. But I, I have to know about him in my own life, that I have to know that he, is, he alone is God of my life. And it's only when we know it as individuals that we can really lay hold of the hope that is coming when Jesus sets up his kingdom. Now, that passage goes on and says, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Unite my heart to fear your name. That's where this idea of an undivided heart, that this is the ESV version, but the NIV says, give me an undivided heart. I want to ask you, what divides your heart these days? Worries? Fears? Trying to make life, uh, make a go at life on your own? Trying to trust in other people to make things right for you? We have to unite our hearts in God's truth, in his way. We have to unite our hearts knowing that he does great and wondrous things. And he alone is God. We, I talk a lot about coping skills. How am I coping? I use things in this world to cope with. They don't bring the peace that I really seek. There's nothing wrong with certain things that we do to help us calm down in a fearful time, but, but we shouldn't rely on that. We should rely on God. And if he chooses to use something like, a, like music or, or some, something to, to help us find peace, but it has to come from him. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. So as I continue to think about that thought, Jeremiah 29, 13 came to me. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Ah, there's the undivided heart. The undivided heart that is seeking God. And we will not seek, find him unless we are seeking him with that undivided heart, with all of our hearts. So we don't just have to talk about the fact that Jesus is coming one day to set up a kingdom of peace. The kingdom of God can reign in our hearts as we unite, see him unite our hearts in serving him as the one true God. We let him bring us the peace that we need. And then as we do that, one of the prayer requests that we share tonight, I pray that, that, that one person said, as I go to work, I pray that I could be a light to those that I work with, that I can make a difference in the lives around me. We don't just pray for ourselves and those close to us in our church. We pray that we could be lights in a dark world. But that's not going to happen unless we have an undivided heart that seeks God with our whole heart. And then we can look forward to the kingdom of peace that is coming in the millennium. But until then, we can find peace as Jesus reigns in our hearts. Let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I pray that you would help us to know that you desire our whole heart. You will not share the throne with anything in our heart. We need to give that up and surrender it to you and let you be the only wise God in our lives. I pray that that would comfort us and I pray that we would share that that is the reason for our hope with people so that they can see that there is light to be had in this dark world. Bless us as we continue on through March and move into the Easter season. We pray that we can proclaim the living Savior who died for sin but rose again. Jesus, it's in your name I pray. Amen. God bless.